I'm always so happy to have the job of showing how what my colleagues are talking about really worked. And this is from the Great Depression and World War II. Republican President Herbert Hoover started the RFC, the Reconstruction Finance Corporation, in his last year in office when he realized that the federal government was the only institution large and powerful enough to address the calamity of the Great Depression. Within that last year, he expanded the RFC so that its lending authority almost equaled the entire federal budget, and he included aid to cities and states in what he did. Franklin Roosevelt inherited the RFC from Herbert Hoover and one of its board members, Jesse Jones, who he made its chairman. And under Jesse Jones's leadership, the RFC saved hundreds of thousands of homes, farms, banks, and businesses from bankruptcy and foreclosure, which is so relevant today as we deal with the impacts of the coronavirus. The RFC developed the latest in high-speed rail. It financed it. It made loans to railroads so they could build the latest in high-speed uh, rail cars. It saved the railroads from bankruptcy by refinancing their debt. The RFC built roads, tunnels, bridges throughout the nation. It brought electricity to rural Americans when they only 10% of them had power back then. They lived in the dark. And then it helped them buy appliances on credit so they could plug into the modern age. That was through the Rural Electrification Administration and the Electric Home Farm Administration. And I want to focus on those for just a second as we talk about how an infrastructure bank can expand and multiply industrial production and manufacturing. So the REA brought electricity to rural America when 10% had it and that was it. 90% lived in the dark. So that meant that through the EHFA, which allowed them to buy appliances on credit, that boosted manufacturing in refrigerators, fans, radios, light bulbs. It employed electricians and plumbers. The industrial expansion was multiplied from the loans the RFC was making. And it's always important to remember the RFC, our nation's infrastructure bank, was a lending institution, not a spending institution. And those loans were all repaid with a small profit for the federal government and its taxpayers, which is something that I think that we are anticipating with the new infrastructure bank. The RFC converted its focus from domestic economics to global defense as war was spreading through Europe. But by 1936, after FDR's first four years in office, it's important to know as we're talking about industrial expansion, Industrial output in the United States doubled from 1929 to 1936. It was producing more cars in 1936 than it had in 1929. And it was all because of the efforts of the Reconstruction Finance Corporation and the other programs of the New Deal that was increasing employment, increasing manufacturing, increasing the industrial base in time to start militarizing for World War II. It really was a national security issue as much as it was an economic issue. So as I said, the RFC converted its focus from domestic economics to global defense and began building the enormous factories that would manufacture the trucks, tanks, ships, and airplanes that were required Required to fight and win World War II. Our military ranked 17th in the world in 1940 when Jesse Jones and the RFC began to build this massive industrial base. The RFC invested in aviation alone 10 times more than the industry had invested in itself throughout its entire history. By the end of the war, the RFC owned 70% of the av aviation industry. The way it would work, the RFC would build these enormous plants and lease them to corporations to operate. After the war was over, the RFC sold all this manufacturing capacity to private industry. It had no intention to nationalize anything. It only wanted to save capitalism during the Great Depression and democracy during World War II. The RFC even 
orchestrated the development of synthetic rubber from the lab to mass production 18 months before the attacks on Pearl Harbor. And if it had not been for those investments and initiative, the Allied forces would have been stuck in place and unable to fight. In 1955, when the last synthetic rubber plants were sold, the New York Times reported that the program was in magnitude only second to the atomic energy program. I, I listed some numbers here I want to read. Um, in Houston, the greater Houston area where I live and where my family came to in the 1940s as part of that massive migration, uh, Employment in the chemical uh, industry in the greater Houston area in the 1940s went from 80 to 20,000. Population increased from 410,000 to 726,000. And that was all because of the investments made by the Reconstruction Finance Corporation during the Great Depression and World War II. And it's important to know the RFC was embraced by Republicans, Democrats, liberals, and conservatives. It touched the lives of every American citizen and business. The RFC during the Great Depression made loans to every congressional district in the nation, and its industrial plants that it built were spread out throughout the entire country to have a massive multiplying effect on employment, on industrialization, and on manufacturing. A new infrastructure bank modeled after what the RFC did during the Great Depression and World War II can address our daunting challenges today at, with no new taxes, no new federal debt, and employ millions of people with new good paying jobs. Thank you.